why Tapu Koko should be banned from 1v1 by Elo Bandit. Two S-tier movesets. The first one being Gigavolt Havoc Offense. Easy Button Havoc is the max speed Timid or Jolly Tapu Koko set that drops a Gigavolt Havoc on turn one or two after a charge, obliterating anything in its path. The special attack version kills things with a 185 base power nuke off a fully invested 95 base special attack, multiplied by 1.5 times for electric terrain. Charge powers this up another 1.5 times to turn max HP, max special defense Metagross into a one hit KO. The attack invested version kills things with a 175 base power nuke off a fully invested 115 base attack, multiplied by 1.5 times for electric terrain, and another 1.5 times for charge, making max HP, max defense Chansey into a one hit KO. This is the second S tier Tapu Koko move set, Iron Defense and Roost. So defensive Tapu Koko with Iron Defense Roost often carries charge for special attackers and an electric move of the user's choice. So this is kind of where things get a little ugly because it turns out that Tapu Koko is a defensive monster with the ability to boost either defense by plus two turn one and recover HP reliably afterward. Offensive easy EVs aren't a requirement when you can launch charged up electric stabs of your choice from behind a comfortable plus four defense or plus four special defense step. Overwhelming moveset versatility. You may have heard that Tapu Koko was countered by dragons like Charizard X, Dragonite, Mega Altaria, Garchomp, Zygarde, Latios, Haxorus, and Mega Skeptile, since they all resist or absorb Koko's electric nuke. Ferium Z Tapu Koko is here to shatter this false image. Outspeeding all of the above except Skeptile, Modest Ferium Z is a guaranteed Oko on Altaria, Chomp, Zygarde, Latias, Haxorus, and Mega Skeptile. Running Roost and Iron Defense ensures that you beat Zard X and Dragonite. Substitute helps a multitude of situations, and Combine is a boosting option you have that empowers more than just your electric moves. What is a Ferrothorn? Specs Tapu Koko does not know. Specs Tapu Koko does not care. Specs Tapu Koko walks onto the scene and clicks one move, possibly twice. T-Bolt, because it has 100% accuracy. Dazzling Gleam for secondary stab, HP Fire for those sweet 4 times weaknesses, and your choice of the 70% accurate Thunder Miss and the Swampert Crushing Grass Knot. Fly MZ set. Substitute turn 1 to, to absorb a hopefully physical attack. Mirror move turn 2 boosts your attack stat by 2 and fires off the Z move version of whatever move just hit you. You can also use Z Brave Bird to take out counters like Mega Venusaur, but you do have to invest into special defense to take a Sludge Bomb in this matchup. Uh, Wild Charge is here as your physical stab move. Tapu Koko is able to counter its own hardest counters. This is where I reveal to you the ground bait Tapu Koko. Here's where things get a little bit disgusting. So ground types are supposed to be the one ultimate counter to sue Tapu Koko, but it's so good at tanking hits that it can absorb a max attack adamant Z earthquake from Don Fan and Gollum with ease and boost up its defenses before two hit KOing with HP Ice or Grass Knot. This beats most ground types, including Mamoswine, Lando T, Excadrill, Assorted Grandium Z users, etc. Notably, it does lose to Garchomp since it can't both outspeed and tank a hit from either the Scarf or Band variants. This set still beats the thing that Tapu is supposed to beat, like Gyarados, Mawile, and Mega Pinsir, and it's actually got a better matchup versus Zardax than Standard Coco does. All right, so here's an example battle um, where we've got Tapu Koko versus Alandris. Um, Tapu Koko's electric seed, of course, is going to go off immediately, and Iron Defense goes off before Tectonic Rage. Tectonic Rage only going to hit for about 70%, and Dawn Phantom Golem don't hit much harder either. So you'll see two hit KO easily after tanking another Earthquake, no problem. Raw stats give Koko freedom to allocate EVs freely. Let's take a look at some Tapu Koko stats. So max speed Timid Koko hits 394 speed, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, even with modest, you're still hitting, hitting 359 speed, which outpaces pretty much the rest of the metagame. Without a boosting nature, you're able to invest 56 speed to outspeed slow ground types up to Lando T, 132 for all base 100s, 152 for Garchomp if you're running Specs HP Ice, 192 will put you above Greninja, and 220 will put you above Kartana. Electric Terrain lets Tapu Koko land one-hit KOs without a boosting nature. I've got a couple examples of here of how hard Koko hits without a modest nature, and you'll see that um, you don't have to invest at all to KO things that you hit super effectively. You KO resisted hits after charge, and if something is fully spadef, you still KO it after charge. So, yeah, there's that. Point is, Electric Terrain lets Tapu Koko hit hard enough without investing EVs or nature towards attack or special attack. 
Tapu Koko can invest defensively and still be threatening offensively. I've kind of mentioned before how Tapu Koko has speed and offense kind of given to it, so it's free to invest defensively. Uh, its seemingly frail base defenses are patched up by this freedom of EV investment and capability of boosting either defense by two before the opponent can move with Iron Defense or Z-Charge respectively. This results in sets like the defensive Tapu Kokos, um, which combined Roost with the aforementioned defen defensive boosting moves um, to turn Koko into a defensive behemoth without really hurting its ability to drop a Gigavolt Havoc and end lives. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the specific counter sets that Tapu Koko forces. If you really want to beat Tapu Koko, here is a Metagross Mega with a huge HP stat, a good attack stat, a huge special defense stat, and a good speed stat with Bulldoze, Laser Focus, and Earthquake. This is all required if you want to absolutely beat Tapu Koko 100%. Let me explain. Mega Metagross's standard fast offensive set is countered by Tapu Koko's standard fast offensive set, since Tapu Koko outspeeds and one-shots Mega Metagross. However, Metagross can invest into HP and Special Defense and take the move Bulldoze, so that it can tank a hit, slow down Tapu Koko, and two-hit KO it. However, with Tapu Koko's new addition of the Roost Iron Defense stat, Meta Metagross now has to invest HP, has to invest, invest Special Defense, has to take Bulldoze to slow down Koko, Earthquake to hit it just a little bit harder, because Bulldoze isn't a guaranteed two-hit KO on Bulky Koko, and Laser Focus to bypass Iron Defense. Is this too much to ask for a Meta Metagross to invest just to always beat Koko? I think so. I think it is. I think that this kind of um, set specific is a little bit too much, and it kind of puts us in an unhealthy meta. Uh, a Pokemon shouldn't have to give up three move slots and all of its EVs just to beat one thing. Alright, so to recap, Tapu Koko dominates the meta with two sets, has the versatility to run several alternate sets and surprise checks. It is capable of beating its own hardest counters with the Electric Seed set. It has huge unpredictability factor in the physical and special split, so you never know which one you're up against in Team Preview. It's fast without a plus speed nature. It does crazy damage without a plus attack nature, thanks to its huge natural speed stat and electric terrain. It has the freedom to invest EVs defensively in order to boost and roost to victory. And lastly, it forces specific counter sets, severely limiting team building. In conclusion, Tapu Koko should be banned from Sun and Moon 1v1. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys stay tuned for next time.